Hey everybody, uh, we're going to go over quick how to make our little LED base and the LED acrylic insert. And this is just for a picture that I chose, your picture is going to be a little different. <coughs> but you're just going to start with a 6x6 six six inch document. And we're going to put both files in the same document. You leave all that stuff default. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do just a basic base shape. I know that I've talked to a couple of you and you've decided to do something more complex. That's fine as long as you stay within this 6x6 six six container that you're given. Okay, so I'm just drawing an ellipse here and I'm turning it to 90 degrees horizontal and then I'm going to kind of expand it out to fit the page or close to fitting the page. And then I'm going to hit control D to make a duplicate because I'm going to need to do two different cuts on this on the mill. I need one for the top and one for the bottom. So for the top, we just want to put a slot in here for our acrylic to slide into. And the acrylic that we're using is 8th inch acrylic. So you want to measure a dimension here and make sure that you get the size of this slot to be the same size as the acrylic so that it doesn't wobble around inside of the slot. Okay, so 0.12. 125 and then all I'm going to do here is grab all that stuff and center the slot so based on the object and then I hit center level and then center into the middle Then for the bottom slot, you need to have a slot cut in there big enough to fit the LED strip light in. So same story, just a little bit bigger rectangle. And put a dimension on it and measure that. width should be 0.6 or so to be safe. If you can't get it exact, it's not a big deal, but right around 0.6 you should have enough room for the LED strip to sit inside of there. And then I want to extend this out so that it chops out one side of my base. So that I have room for the cords and stuff to come out from the LED strip. So I'm going to center this just like I did the other one and then click on my box and slide it over so that the box just goes outside of the ellipse so then I'm going to add a second page and I could just drop a picture in there that I have uh, from a project behind, but we don't have a lot of these for you guys, so um, this is just a normal black and white picture that we could use. The goal here is because we're etching it with the laser, the dark colors show up as deeply etched and the lighter grays and whites show up not etched and they will reflect light differently. So I'm just going to go on the internet here and find a image. It's a good idea to search for an SVG because they tend to be in black and white or a few shades of gray which makes the world easier for you. There's lots of different color pictures here of a fox but I'm gonna choose one that is mostly black and white 
Okay, and then you can right click and save that image and the key here is to make sure that the image sa saves as a JPEG or a PNG not some sort of HTML format or anything like that so just double check your file type if you can't save it as a JPEG then you'll have to find a different image okay, and then I'm just going to import this in and we've done this process before in Fab 1, but it's just kind of a reminder of how this works. So you're going to drag it up, fit it into the box that you're limited to. And then you're going to trace your bitmap. And if you find an SVG like this that's mostly black and white, you can just trace it as a basic logo. And then you're going to go up here and you're going to change your color palette to the one that works with the laser. Hey, you can use grayscale too, you get pretty good effects with that, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the one from Roland. And so this automatically sorts it into three different colors. The laser can go up to uh, probably about ten shades of gray, but it's really hard to tell the difference between them. So keep it to three or five, uh, you'll get the best results. Hey, now the issue with an image like this is that the base is not going to necessarily be the same size. So the first thing I want to do is trace this. So I'm going to give it an outline. I'm going to give it the, the red cut line that we need to cut out on the laser. And then I need to size it so that it will fit into my base. Okay, so down here at the bottom having that little sliver sit in the base it won't let a lot of light up into the fox and so I want to match this rectangle with the one on page two so I'm just gonna copy it go to page two and paste it so I know it'll be exactly the same size as the slot that I drew on my first drawing I'm gonna put it down here at the bottom of the fox and use that to kinda of give me a guideline of how big the base needs to be. So the bigger the base is, the more light you get into your image, the better it will look. Okay, I could make it smaller, but again, that won't let as much light through. So then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take my line tool and I'm going to draw a line from one corner of my slot here and kind of bring it up to the fox. I could go straight up if I wanted to, but I don't have a lot of drawing to, to go into there, so I'm kind of doing a little angle here. Okay, and you want to make sure that these corners line up if you're going to draw it this way so that your laser cut doesn't overlap, but I'm going to also show you a way to make sure that the corners are connected as well. So I just set that right there on that corner. Seemed like a good place to match it up. And then the same thing over here. Kind of moved it around, set it on a corner that I thought looked good. Okay, and then on the outline of my fox, I'm going to disconnect those lines. Because I don't want to cut out the bottom part of the fox, I want to just cut up to the lines here. I have to do this on both sides. Now if you have an object that's kind of square, you don't necessarily have to do this, you just have to make sure that the bottom of your object matches the size of the slot in your base. Okay, but now I'm just grabbing these lines and selecting the nodes that I don't want to stay there and deleting them. And if you have lots of them, you kind of group them like this in a square selection and delete a bunch of them all at once. So you can see now my cut line comes down to where I just made my little frame to fit into the slot. So now I'm just going to change these 
So I got rid of the box, and I'm just going to have one line go all the way across the bottom here. Okay, and you can see that I still need to change this to my cut color. So I'm going to set this at hairline, go into my palette there, and change it to my red cut color. So that's going to be what gets cut out of the acrylic. So the fox head will get etched out in black and white. The red will get cut out and it'll fit into the slot that I drew on the first page. So we want to make sure those match. Now if you want to move stuff around a little bit and your corners aren't attached, you can see that I run into an issue here because I'm going to cut on the laser and those corners aren't going to meet and then I won't get a good cutout. Okay, and then the same issue up here. So I can move those up to where I want them to be but all this does is move the line and now that corner is still detached so I'm gonna delete this line and then I'm gonna click on the line I want to attach it to and then bring up my drawing tool until this little symbol changes as I drag it over the corner and now it's attached and then all I have to do is drag this corner up here to make it click in and then I don't want that little notch there so I'm just going to pin this down here a little bit. Okay, so now I have a file to cut out of my acrylic, and I also have the outline that I can put into Carbide Create to cut out my base. Happy drawing.